Next, I'd like to talk about historical particularism. Okay, so this developed in response to social evolutionism, which we just talked about. Okay, so this responded to the idea, encountered the idea, that human societies develop along a series of predetermined stages from savagery to barbarism to civilization. So this countered that idea. This says that you need to explore each society within its own context. It focused a lot on um, relativism, right? So focusing on the context of the culture to understand the culture, um, but also included ideas of diffusionism. And the textbook that we use for the online classes separates diffusionism from what um, they call American historicism, okay? So they kind of separate it a little bit, but I'll talk about both here, okay? Essentially, historical particularism suggests that individual societies develop particular cultural traits and undergo unique processes of change, and that these traits diffuse from one culture to another. Okay. Franz Boas is our scholar here. So when you hear the name Boas, which you will hear all the time if you can, can continue in anthropology, he is the father of historical particularism. So he kind of came up with this. So that's where you'll hear his name connected. Okay. Really what's important to get out of this one is that we're talking about very specific, context-specific studies of cultures. Okay. So you're looking at um, studying cultural change and development to explain how and why change happened. Okay. They focused on cautious and contextualized interpretation of data with that relativistic point of view, like I said, and it rejects these universal laws or views or interpretations of culture, which is exactly what social evolutionism suggests. Right, that every single society will pass through the same stages um, and will have the same characteristics at each stage. Franz Boas says, no, 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 we disagree. Um, you can't have universal laws of culture because every culture has its own rich history. And so we have to study that specific historical context. Another important concept within historical particularism is that you must study particulars of many cultures before you can make large sweeping generalizations. Okay, and this wasn't something that was done previously. Okay, um, within social evolutionism, we just suggested that all societies developed exactly the same way, and Franz Boas and his school of thought rejected this idea. Okay, so there's on the handout that I have for you and on the University of Alabama Department of Anthropology's website, which I've linked to, it goes into more detail about two different schools of thought. For this class, I don't really need you to know of the ton of differences there. Um, just understand historical particularism at its basic level. Okay, but Boas had an interpretation of culture as a set of customs, social institutions, and beliefs that characterize a particular society. And he pointed out that cultural differences are not due to race, but rather to differing environments, which is important. Because social evolutionism, on the other hand, was used to justify um, racism and categorization of people into levels of development, okay, which was, had a very negative effect on interpretation and treatment of other peoples know that in this particular um, theoretical perspective, cultural relativism becomes very important. And so we've already learned what that is, right? Just beliefs, customs, pra practices, and rituals of an individual culture must be observed and evaluated from the perspective in which they originate and are manifested, right? So you have to understand these behaviors from within the culture. That comes from this theory. Okay? This was really important to um, historical particularism. And so methods in this, um, Historical particularism is not a method in itself, okay? but it does focus on recording any and all types of cultural information, so getting a very um, whole, more holistic picture than um, social evolutionism would do. It looks at oral history and tradition, so talking to people about their history, their culture's history. Um, very intensive participant observation, so you have to be there in the culture to talk about things. Okay. This really brought about um, a four-field or holistic methodology, like we already said. Um, very systematic and critical investigation. Um, so trying to do things the same way across different studies and between cultures.